All right, at Fox 5 Health News, is your doctor following the rules when taking your blood pressure? Experts say probably not. Joining us now is Fox 5 medical contributor Dr. Devin Napia Parampal from NYU School of Medicine. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Well, what's the deal? Well, last week we were talking about how the numbers have changed for blood pressure, right? So by the same standards, we want to have a, a standardized measurement for how mm -hmm. you're getting those numbers, right? So some of the things are the same. I mean, you're still using a blood pressure cuff, but at the same time, they want to standardize some other things. So, you know, the blood pressure cuff should only be put on your bare skin as opposed to over clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be kind of at rest. So mm -hmm. it shouldn't be where you're running into the room, you're kind of out of breath, and then you're getting your blood pressure checked, or you've just uh, smoked. <laughs> Obviously, you like, shouldn't be nice smoking. Right, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> exercise, mm -hmm. caffeine, all these different things that could change it. You want to generally be sitting in a chair as opposed to laying down or mm. be in some other position. But the reason it matters, I'll just I'll just say, is, you know, we're checking blood pressure in the arm, right? But it's not the blood pressure in the arm that makes such a significant impact. It's an estimate for what the blood pressure is that your brain, your heart, your other organs are seeing. So what you want is to get the closest measure to what your blood pressure is in normal life, you know, as you're going through the right. time. So not when you're running. It's easy to get a false reading on that. Exactly. So you want to get a consistent standard and then be able to make that diagnosis after two readings. Gotcha. Mm, wow. Okay. Thank you. Well, it looks like uh, the message is not getting through. A new report by the CDC finds that most adults still don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. I'm shocked by this more because I, I, maybe it's a Manhattan thing, but I feel like everything's a salad place. Maybe it's vegetables are so cool right now. It is places. expensive. I guess. It's definitely yeah. other places. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good cost, point because right? actually the CDC mentioned that too. That people yeah. who are in the higher that's income bracket is. tend to eat more fruits and oh, vegetables, yeah. and they're they're healthier. Everything. See yeah, doctors that, more. Right? Yeah. Listen. Exactly. I will say even in terms of time. So so for me, you know, I like fruits. I don't. You know, I'm a little picky when it comes to vegetables, but I like fruits. But the time it takes to wash the fruits, if you're buying them, to yeah. cut them up and everything else is kind of a lot. So I tend to, if I can, get the ones that are already chopped, which sounds a little lazy, but just from a practical point right, of view, right. you tend to eat those more. But I think that's part of the issue for some folks, you know, that you have to be aggressive with those things. I mean, and some they're of the, more expensive if they're chopped, by yeah, the way. Exactly. And more, more potentially the prone to salmonella yeah. or whatever food well, and stuff, too. But the, those are other, either, other factors. But in yeah. general, I mean, I will say our numbers are very poor, so it's more on the order of 10%. Only about 10% of people actually yeah. meet the requirements requirements for what they should be getting per day, which just so you know is uh, about two cups. So like if you can fill two cups with fruit per day, that's ideal. Three cups per day of veggies is ideal. And very few people are actually meeting right. that. So three cups of veggies and two, two cups, cups of, of fruit. fruit. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. All right, good deal. Thank you, Dr. Debbie. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you.